made that quote. I stopped myself from apologizing, because what would I even be sorry for? Existing too loud? Hello bookworms, Tibber is dead. My name is Whitney and today we have my November TBR. So I definitely was very ambitious in October. I did my wrap up yesterday so if you haven't seen that check it out. Read a lot of books. Not as many as I had originally planned and definitely you didn't get to all the books I had originally planned even though I added on the others. <laughs> um, but it was a really good reading month. And in yesterday's video and in today's, you'll have noticed I included quotes right at the beginning. And basically, you just gotta name that quote. So go down in the comments, leave the book and the author. Um, and if you want a bonus point, you can also leave the character name if there is one. Now the points don't matter, this is purely for fun. But I just, I love quotes and so I thought this would be a fun little interactive thing we could do together. Now the there will be hints in a pin comment and the responses to that pin comment there'll be hints um and that way you can get hints if you need them it will be some way related to whatever video i'm doing so like yesterday's it was related to one of the books in my wrap up and today it's related to one of the books in my tbr now I will give the answers in the next video I do, so today I will give you the answers for yesterday's video. So if you don't want that spoiled, pause now, um, either skip ahead or jump off, go check out yesterday's video and then come back to this one. But the quote was, listen to them, the children of the night, what music they make. And that was from Dracula by Bram Stoker and the character was Count Dracula. So definitely let me know down in the comments who you think what book you think today's quote's from um, and who you think said it and I will let you know in my next video the answer so if you don't want to miss out definitely make sure you have that bell notification push um, because I don't have a regular schedule I tried to do a regular schedule but to me I does it I didn't want to just do a video to do a video to be on schedule I wanted to have something to talk about instead of forcing it so Let's go ahead and jump into the TBR. So some of these are rollovers from last month. Like I said, I did not get to everything. So first up, we are going to be reading Duncan Wood by William Horwood. I read about half of this. Um, there's 582 pages. I read 200 pages exactly. Um, and so there's 302 pages left that I will be continuing on. I read the first two parts of the book. This is about um, a system of moles and kind of their lives. And you have Bracken and Rebecca who are the main characters of the book, but it kind of follows other moles as well. Um, and I expected to enjoy this book because I love animal main characters, but I did not expect to be so emotionally invested. This book is very violent and shocking at times, but also very heartwarming as well. And I can't wait to continue on with this. I did tab it out in sections of approximately 50 pages, between 40 and 50 pages each. Um, the last section is about 70 pages. So I'll probably continue on with trying to just do sections. Um, but I am really, really excited to continue this. Next up, I still have about 100 pages to read, but I will finish this tonight, which is October 31st. So this is the Circle Trilogy by Nora Roberts, so I'll have finished this one, but I unfortunately did not get to the other two. So we have Dance of the Gods and Valley of Silence. This is basically, you have Lilith, who is this evil vampire who's creating an army to basically take over the world, and then... You have Morgan, the goddess, who calls on the circle of six to fight her. So you have a sorcerer, you have a witch, you have a scholar, and a shapeshifter, um, a warrior, and then one who is lost who happens to be a vampire as well. And they're having to band together and fight this evil. And so yeah, I'm really excited to continue this. You have kind of time travel, travel between worlds, like very, very 
intricate, I guess. Um, the vibe, it was perfect for October, um, perfect for the darker evenings and such. It's a bit heavy, but I'm really excited to continue reading this series, rereading it, because I've already read it before in the past. So, then I did not get to my ABC author books at all. So first up, we have The Lost Book of Moses, The Search, The Hunt for the World's Oldest Bible by Shannon Tagay. Um, and so this one, it says, In the summer of 1883, Moses Wilhelm Shapira, archaeological treasure hunter, inveterate social climber, and denizen of Jerusalem's bustling marketplace, arrived unannounced in London, London, claiming to have discovered the world's oldest Bible scroll, written centuries earlier in the barren plains east of the Dead Sea, and stashed away in the caves. The mysterious scrolls call into question the divine authorship of the scriptures, taking 3,000 years of religious faith and turning them upside down. When news of the discovery leaked to the excited English press, Shapira became a household name, but before the British Museum could acquire them, Shapira's nemesis, French archaeologist Charles Claremont Gannou, denounced his find as a fraud. Humiliated, Shapira fled the country. Six months later, he was dead. So, um, not sure if this will be something I've enjoyed, but I'm definitely intrigued, and I'm hopeful that I will enjoy it. So there's that one. And then we have Exodus Revisited by Leon Uris. Uh, so this is the Exodus is the story of the greatest miracle of our times, the rebirth of a nation. It tells the story of Jews coming back after centuries of abuse, torture, and murder to carve an oasis in the sand with guts and with blood. Their story was a revelation to me as I discovered it in the farms and cities of Israel. These were Leon Eris's own words about Exodus. Now in Exodus Revisited, he returns to the places and the people that first inspired his famous novel. He takes you with him on this, his sentimental journey on his heartwarming return to a vibrant young nation with an ancient and violent past. So I've never read Exodus, but this one has a bunch of pictures with his you know, travels and such. So excited to get to that one as well. And then I am going to be trying to finish my ABC author challenge in the month of November because I have plans for December and it does not include those. I'm also not going to finish my 25 days of book miss books this year. Um, that was the original goal, but I'm just going to roll what I have left over into the new year because like I said, I have plans and some of those are chunky and it's just not going to happen this year. But the ones that are left are the ones I'm most excited for. So I definitely get to them. They're just going to have to wait till next year. But before we get into some of those, next we have The Ace of Spades by Ferda Abike Ayumide. I probably butchered that. I looked up how to pronounce it. Um, probably still butchered it. But this one will actually be the first thing I read in November because it has to go back to the library on the 4th. So I need to get it read. Um, but this one, I've heard it compared to Gossip Girl, but it also... Um, has the social commentary of what um, like black students face and such. So it says, when two Nevis private academy students, Devin Richards and Shimaka Adebayo, are selected to be part of the elite school seniors prefix, it looks like their year is off to an amazing start. After all, not only does it look great on college applications, but it officially puts them in the running for valedictorian too. Shortly after the announcement is made, though, someone who goes by Aces begins sending anonymous text messages to reveal secrets about the two of them that turn their lives upside down and threaten every aspect of their carefully planned futures. As Aces shows no sign of stopping, what seemed like a sick prank quickly turns into a dangerous game, with all the cards stacked against them. Can Devin and Shamaka stop Aces before things become incredibly deadly? So yeah, I'm excited to finally read this. I've heard really, really good things. Like I said, this will be the very first thing I get read because it has to go back. So, uh, and then we're definitely trying to fit on some nonfiction for nonfiction November. Next up, this one I've been wanting to read for a while. This was gifted to me by Kelly at Books I'm Not Reading. Channel link down below. This is Lessons from Lucy by Dave Barry. And I have a project plan that involves this. So I'm really excited to finally get to it. But this one, 
It's supposed to be really funny, so that's good. But it says she has more friends, fewer worries, and way more fun. So Dave decides to figure out how Lucy manages to stay so happy to see if he can make his own life happier by doing the things she does, except for drinking from the toilet. He reconnects with old friends and tries to make new ones, which turns out to be a struggle because Lucy likes people a lot more than he does. And he gets back in touch with two ridiculous but fun groups from his past. The Lawn Rangers, a group of guys who march in parades pushing lawnmowers and twirling brooms. Alcohol is involved. And the Rock Bottom Remainders, the world's oldest and least talented all-author band. With each new lesson, Dave riffs hilariously on dogs, people, and life in general, while also pondering deep questions such as when it's okay to lie, answer, when scallops are involved, Lessons from Lucy is a witty and affable guide to joyous living at any age, and as you will see, when Dave faces a family crisis, the lessons come just in time for him. So, really excited to finally get to this. Um, it's been sitting, waiting for me, and this month is the month. And then, because it is nonfiction November, this is what I picked up. I did kind of start it, but um, I had so many other reads going on. Um, that I wasn't able to fill it, finish it, but it's Spillover by David Quammen. And this is basically talking about zoonotic viruses, um, and just how it affects humans. So it says animal infections and the next human pandemic. So I did enjoy the part that I read. It is thick, um, and dense, but I think it will be enjoyable. It's something I'm interested in. Uh, and so I'm excited to hopefully get to that one this month. Um, not going to push myself too hard on that one. I might only read part of it. Then we have the rest of the books from my ABC author challenge. So my V author, It's All Mental by Marcel Vertes. Uh, and so this one is going to be really easy because it's a bunch of pictures and a bunch of like short little lines there. But it says, in this sophisticated and vastly amusing spoof, an internationally renowned artist casts off his inhibitions and sharply sat satirizes the more familiar foibles and follies of psychoanalysis, that is, psychoanalysis with a capital S-E-X. The result is unmitigated joy, a source of far from innocent merriment that will be relished by the millions who are fed up with it all, as well as those who take their parlor psychology seriously. <laughs> so um, this should be fun. I picked it up for my B author, caught my eye. And it should be fun to read and nice and short, which is fantastic. Then we have my W author. So we have The Monster of Marylebone by Wayne Worcester. And this one says, A brutal man-man is on the loose in London's Tony St. Marylebone neighborhood. Prominent shopkeepers are being viciously murdered and mutilated, and Scotland Yard is at a loss for clues. They have no choice but to turn to Sherlock Holmes for a solution. But when Holmes himself falls victim to the killer's violent malice, his mission becomes a personal one. He and Watson continue their search for the murderous demon terrorizing London and who will do anything to see them dead. So obviously, Sherlock and Watson inspired... Um, nice and short again, and excited to finally read this one as well. Then, this is probably one of the one I'm most interested in. This is by, um, I want to say Shanghai. So the author was born in Shanghai. Um, but it's A Case of Two Cities by, I'm not even going to try. I did not look up how to pronounce that. Um, Q Xiaolong? I guess I said I wasn't going to try it. I did. Anyway, probably butchered that. But, but yeah, I'm excited to have found this one for my ex-author. So you have Inspector Chen of the Shanghai Police Department is assigned a high-profile anti-corruption case, one in which the principal figure, Zing, has long since fled to the United States and beyond the reach of the Chinese government. But Zing left behind his organization, and Chen while assigned to root out the co-conspirators, is not sure whether he's actually being set up to fail. In a twisting case that takes him from Shanghai all the way to the United States, reuniting him with his colleague and counterpart from the U.S. Marshal Service, Inspector Catherine Ron, Chen finds himself at odds with hidden, powerful, and vicious enemies. At once a compelling crime novel and an insightful, moving portrayal of contemporary China, China a case of two cities, 
is the finest novel yet in this critically, critically acclaimed award-winning series. So I'm really excited to try this author for sure. So that is going on the list. Then we have my Y author, um, which is Paul Young. The book is Eve. And so it says, on a mysterious island between our world and the next, a young woman washes ashore, broken and barely alive. John, the kind collector who finds her, enlists the aid of healers and scholars, and they soon discover that her genetic code links her to every known race. No one would guess what her survival will mean to all of humankind. No one would bet Eve, mother of the living, a bold, unprecedented exploration of the creation narrative. The story of Eve is a is true to the original text and centuries of scholarship, yet with breathtaking revelations that challenge traditional beliefs about who we are. Um, so yeah, excited to try this one. Thought about saving this one for December, but decided to just go ahead because like, I want to just finish my ABC author challenge. So there's that one. And then the last, but certainly not least, is by Paul Zalis, Who is the River? And I just thought this title was really interesting. And this is a nonfiction. Um, and it's getting lost and found in the Amazon and other places. So it says, When Paul Zalis embarks with Tano, his longtime friend and traveling companion, on a month-long boat trip into the Amazon River Basin, their goal is to find pyramids rumored to exist deep in the jungles, which the German guide, Kurt Gluck, a 40-year veteran of expeditions in South America, has apparently seen. Leaving the hot congestion of Manus, Brazil, behind them, the trio moves up the Rio Negro and Pateri to a remote area near the Venezuelan border, where Indians are said to be armed with military weapons and, according to local lore, to be in contact with people from the stars. The trip grows increasingly dangerous, humorous, and convoluted as Gluck provides a looming theme song whistling the daring young man on a flying trapeze over and over while consistently confusing the words who and where. When the trio gets terribly lost, which is often, he asks again and again, who is the river? So, um, sounds interesting. Not sure if I'll enjoy it or not, but I'm excited to give it a try as well. And like I said, it's my Z author, so... And then that was going to be it, but as I was looking, I actually already chose my TBR for December as well, because I'm going to have to do a little bit of prep work for December. And as I was looking, I saw these two, and I thought, I should add those on. Um, first up is just because it's a nonfiction. My grandma gave this to me, and it's Troublemaker by Leah Rem Remini. Um, and so this is about, I think basically her... Surviving Hollywood and Scientology. So, Leah Remini has never been the type to hold her tongue. That willingness to speak her mind, stand her ground, and rattle the occasional cage has enabled this tough-talking girl from Brooklyn to forge an enduring and successful career in Hollywood. But being a troublemaker has come at a cost. That was never more evident than in 2013 when Remini loudly and publicly broke with the Church of Scientology. Now in this frank, funny, poignant memoir, the former King of Queens star opens up about that experience for the first time, revealing the in-depth details of her painful split with the church and its controversial practices. So, um, I like her. I remember watching King of Queens all the time. Um, and so I'm excited to finally get to this. My grandma gave it to me ages ago, so I'll finally be reading that one. And the last one is one I just hauled, and being it's going to be Thanksgiving in November, and this is about Native Americans, I thought I would pick it up, and plus it's one of the ones I'm most excited for from my haul, and that is There There by Tommy Orange. So, Tommy Orange's wondrous and shattering novel follows 12 characters from Native communities, all traveling to the Big Oakland powwow, all connected to one another in ways they may not realize. Among them is Jackie Redfeather, newly sober and trying to make it back to the family she left behind, Danae Oxendine, pulling his life together after his uncle's, or maybe Dean Oxendine? 
um, after his uncle's death and working at a powwow to honor his memory, 14-year-old Orville coming to perform traditional dance for the first time. Together, this chorus of voices tells us the plight of the urban Native American grappling with complex and painful history with an inheritance of beauty and spirituality, with communion and sacrifice and heroism. Held as an instant classic, there there is at, is at once poignant and unflinching, utterly contemporary and truly unforgettable. And I just love the colors of this book, like so vibrant and eye-catching. So yeah, I thought this would be a good one to add to November for sure. And I'm just too excited to read it, so I didn't want to wait. So there is that. That is my TBR. I am really, really excited for this TBR. There is a lot of nonfiction on here, but I think, you know, I'm not a big nonfiction reader, but I think the ones I have, I'm going to enjoy. So um, I also forgot to mention I do have two audiobooks which are Beyond the One by Tom Felton. Uh, I use my Audible credit to get that one, and everybody's been talking about that one, and I'm just so excited to listen to it. Definitely interested. I really like Tom Felton, um, just based on what I've seen of him, uh, and so I'm really excited to listen to that. He narrates it, uh, and so I'll be listening to that. And then I have Mean Baby by Selma Blair. Selma Blair, of course, is like a staple you know, from the late 90s, early 2000s, um, and I just, you know, I don't know a whole lot about her, um, but she's been very active talking about her struggle with MS, and so I'm interested in learning more. This is more about her childhood from what I understand reading the synopsis, but I'm really excited to just kind of get to know her a little bit more. And it is also narrated by her, so um, that will be a good listen as well. I do like audible audiobooks that are nonfiction, and especially when they're narrated by the author themselves. So that is it for my TBR. I'll go ahead and leave you guys here. There's a lot. Don't forget to make sure to head down into the comments and let me know your answers for the quote. Um, and then make sure you come back next video I do, which I don't know when that will be. Um, and I'll give you the answer to that. And yeah, let us let me know what you are most excited to read um, in the month of November. So I will see you guys next time. Happy reading, everyone. Bye.